Yes. And I think this is going to follow suit. Let's go ahead and introduce our players, Rodan. All right, starting in the top left. His username is Short Stuff, but his play is as big as tall as any Protoss Titan in the world. It's none other than Slayer's Alicia. And in the bottom right-hand corner, that's the purple Zerg, the king of the drones. It is Liquid Rhett. That's coincidentally also his Twitter name, which you can follow him at Liquid Rep. Excellent. Anyway, this is PVZ on Antigua Shipyard. Let's go ahead and go into a little bit of the theory of this matchup uh, and some of the problems that, it, I, I wouldn't say problems, but some of the troubles I think Zerg have going into uh, after three bases. All right. So hit me with it, Andre. All right. Well, uh, th the main thing that we always see consistently is the fact that, yes, it's easy to take your natural and to take your third base, but after that, where do you actually take it where it's not exposed? You know, this is the, the current age of War Prism Harass, and it's on the rise, and it's really getting there, and Alicia has already shown uh, that he's willing to do that. And getting a fourth base, well, once the War Prism Harass hits, all of a sudden you have to defend areas that you really are not able to. Not only your main, your natural, but also the fourth base, wherever it's going to be located. Normally this center isn't really applicable because Protoss is easily just take map control, or center control rather, and a Colossus or a Stalker even can easily snap everything out. So Zergs normally think about almost ending it at the three game or the three base stage. Yes, there's lots of aggression that Zergs love to take in the mid game, especially because, again, there's uh, it's not that many areas where you can really counterattack um, if you control the center unless you uh, really try to sneak across the pathways. And you said yourself, using that war prism to really get into places that you really can't normally access, really tough for Zergs to be on all different fronts, especially if they start losing mobility, right? As the later game goes, you have yeah. Brewlords, you have Infestors, they get slower and slower compared to Zerglings, Roaches, whatever you she could do. So Rhett has that challenge. How do I really confront someone like Alicia, who's actually phenomenal at turtling? We saw him play against Idra, where even if his two-base aggression fails, because Alicia loves a two-base blink, he loves the two-base DTs, even if that doesn't work, he can fall back and play heavy macro and defend against anything Zerg throws at him. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what he brings to the table. Normally, as well, this is a great two-base, actually Void Ray type of uh, two-base all-in just because you can easily d uh, charge up on the rocks, kill those, and all of a sudden your Void Rays come in, or oh, yeah. they can swing around to the main first, warp in some units, and then do the same thing and attack the third base. There's a lot of capabilities. Just really stretch your opponent out and make it very hard to attack with a single punch. I just want to remind people that Antigua Shipyard does have a little bit of a difference in the center. We have reduced minerals, so there's even less incentive for Zerg really to hold this position, making, again, that fourth base even more awkward and makes uh, for Rhett to really want to capitalize on his mid-game advantage. But, of course, that is where Rhett shines really strong, especially even going into late game, uh, by getting out all those uh, the, the expansions and even spreading creep. More Zergs are really prioritizing spreading creep, at least in terms on this map, connecting bases to really make sure to thwart any kind of two-base aggression. And a lot of aggression really comes through those rocks, like you were saying, Andre, yes. because you can bust down, you can put a pylon really in that small little nook and put on lots of stalker aggression. Ooh, and there it is. The target goes down but in range of the Overlord, how unfortunate. Wow. <laughs> Red takes a big advantage because of that, because it, it's instantaneous. He knows it's coming. Uh, now, the, the main uh, lines that you could have seen is Robotics Facility, of course, the four gate, which actually implies the plus one, the warp gate, etc. But knowing that the Stargate, the first 150 gas is allocated over here, he can actually defend it against this very, very accurately. Normally, a couple of spores need to come up, but uh, we've seen Roach Aggression, actually the counterattack, being very strong. And, you know, a lot of times Protoss make this huge emphasis on making sure their Void Ray and their Phoenixes are across the map. You just wait until they come across the map and hit them when they're weakest because all of their investment has been not to defending their, their natural. Yes, and it's really cool that Rhett even caught the third gas timing as well. Now, Rhett uh, doesn't see if there's any mining on it. 
but still, he knows the options that Alicia has in terms of uh, this, this Stargate opening. Now, some Protosses really like to just pressure behind it, of course, get some uh, Stalkers and really poke at uh, the Zerg units and really capitalize on, again, the lack of mobility, especially with the Zerg that doesn't go gas. Because Red has been playing pretty greedy, but that is just textbook Red. He's droning like a man, man. He's going to hit 60 in just a couple of seconds, Andre. And when he does, it's going to be eight minutes, and he's going to have a very strong economy. And instead, Red is choosing to just, yeah, exactly, get a huge economy and just say, I'm going to overpower you no matter what you do, no matter what you throw at me. I'm just going to have so much because I know there was no initial pressure. Forgate didn't exist, so I didn't have to defend against it. Look how many units are out on the map. 11 Zerglings, that's it. That's not that much. Yeah. So Red has really played this really, really cleverly. And uh, we'll see if he's able to defend against this Void Ray pressure because we've seen even MC have a lot of success with this. Yes, uh, Void Ray is just poking in and here, but uh, we do see that Alicia is making another Void Ray and also proxying a pylon at, I guess, would be his seventh base. And you can see that Alicia it, it can just pretty much poke on two different fronts. But again, this rocks, this struggle debris actually is the point of contention. And now that Rhett knows, and a good job spreading creep as well, so you can able to even go for a flank if he so desires. One thing to note is that a robotics facility is behind this, so he's not, in fact, uh, choosing to do some sort of heavy two-base aggression. Zealots will be intercepted over here. They get a lot of pot shots on them mm. before the Void Raids actually get in here. And the Zealots will go down very easily. Yeah, and uh, this is kind of like a throwback go where Void Ray Zealot aggression, you can kind of poke on different fronts and warp into the high ground. You can see Alicia trying to place a pylon below the main of Rhett and also threaten to warp in Zealots, but uh, at this point, you can see Alicia has no more units building on that Stargate, already going to transition to ground. And normally when you do this, you want to force a little bit of more ground units and transition to Robo immediately. And you can see Alicia already has his first Immortal going to boost that. Yep. Void Rays will start engaging on this first Queen. Nice transfuse. Keeps that Queen alive. And uh, Alicia is going to just back up that one Void Ray. Very well played by Alicia so far, but taking a lot of damage. Uh, was it worth it though, Frodan? Uh, it's a lot of investment, Andre. 750, 450 for three Void Rays that haven't really done too much damage. But they do control the map, which is a really important point at this, uh, at this stage of the game. And also because Alicia can see what his opponent has. He sees that Red's been playing greedy. I mean, Red got everything pretty delayed. He got his road for at eight minutes. So it's, it's been really thin for Red, but at the same time, he's been doing a good job getting away with it. He's got a pretty oh my God. decent uh, drone count. At this point, he's yeah. doing everything. And you can see the king of the drones, man. He's going to swoop in here. Look at this. So many sentries being caught out of position. Oh. Gets a full surround. Not a single force he'll get dropped. There it is, finally. But every single one of these sentries will be cleaned up. Beautiful play by Red, taking out the Immortal. And he's just going to swoop in, probably just putting so much pressure on the natural. Huge cleanup here from Red. And now he sees a temporary opening. Trying to see if he can go through the forge as well, but he's going to just focus onto the cannon. Realizing, wait, you actually have nothing here. And you can see Alicia has a very well-placed force field, a very precise. And with three Void Rays, Rhett can't keep this aggression on too long, but at this point, he's just uh, going to kill the forge and back off home. Yeah, he has to back off because of those Void Rays. They're just doing way too much damage here. And the choice of tech is going to be Infester tech. Pathogen Glance on the way as we speak. Uh, obviously, the, the other main route is to go for Hydralisks, which are... I would say significantly weaker in this, this matchup, but uh, obviously Infestors have a nice uh, progression they can go into Infestor Broodlord. At this time, look at this, Queens are already in the middle of the map, yeah. zoning off all these Void Rays, trying to pick off one of them. Don't think he'll get it. But uh, they start up on this one Overlord. Oh, trying to use that <laughs> Overlord as Vayne. Look at that. Every single Overlord is valuable in the eyes of Rhett. Man, he could create his own uh, species at this point. But you can see Red is also expanding to the center of the map. Wow, this is a, a really strong sign of confidence that Red can take over. And for good reason, look, he's got Crease Red already to the center. Yeah, that's precisely right. And, you know, he has just such a huge um, supply advantage over his opponent. And really, he, he feels so comfortable to do anything. I don't think this is good, oh. though. It's very ill-fated to actually go on that. Void Rays are... <laughs> Again, almost being taken out, but Rhett just cannot clean that up. Oh, and Alicia might be pushing out the worst time possible. Oh, and the Zerglings and Rushes are waiting there. Rhett said, you have fallen for my trap. 
which wasn't so, uh, was even that hidden. I mean, Red had his army waiting there the entire time, and that's because Alicia's observer is not tracking the movements of the army. It's pretty much just staying in the center of the map, and the big thing is Red knows that Alicia is not going for a third base, so he knows that it's inevitably just going to be this huge push, or at least that Alicia's base is going to be so delayed he won't have a huge amount of gas that Protosses are used to. Yes, and now that Infestors are out, that's going to add so much DPS to this. I mean, just locking them in place gives uh, Rhett the ability to just surround completely. Here we go, another big engagement. Fungal growth goes directly on all those sentries, and Red is coming in from all angles. Fungal on everything, Andre. The Protoss army can't leave, and at this point, Red is going to clean up everything. The Queens are also working onto the Void Race. GG is called out. Red takes game number one on Antigua Shipyard, absolutely destroying the Protoss army. And we have ourselves... Another Zerg that has a strong lead in a best of seven, Andre. Yeah, very clear win for Rhett. Ooh. Played it very well. Um, you know, the big thing, honestly, was that Overlord seeing that Stargate. As soon as that happens, yeah. you have a lot. You know what your opponent is capable of. And as soon as you do that so early, it's like, okay, no four gate is coming. Plus one cannot be finished that early. Mm -hmm. uh, even Warp Gate can't be finished that yeah, early because so you're going to be allocating. Is safe as exactly. long as you can protect the queens and make sure set the spores. I mean, it's as if Rhett played with the vision on of everything. He just typed in Black Sheep Wall and saw every single thing that Alicia was doing. Nothing went uh, unsought by, uh, by Rhett there. And now Rhett has a 1-0 lead, and it's just so important. Andre, you played in best of sevens. How critical is this for momentum? Um, you know, it obviously starts you off on the right foot, but uh, I wouldn't say anything just yet. There's still a lot of games to be played, and anything can happen. <laughs> so no momentum. No. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks so much to Epson. The people who provide projectors for NSL Season 3. Couldn't have done it without you guys. And uh, couldn't have done it without you beautiful folks. You guys, it's been almost 12 hours since some of you guys have come to the event. You guys are beautiful. And you guys have been loud. So thank you so much to everyone who came in. We're getting ready for game number two between Alicia and Rhett when we return. More action from the NSL Season 3 Grand Finals here in Toronto, Canada.